Assalamu alaikum. Uh, let us uh, start. So last time, uh, we uh, first one thing uh, we discussed uh, lab, and in lab actually we discussed two scenarios. One is an uncontrolled spread of uh, coronavirus and modeling it using a first order IAR filter. And in this case, uh, we said if it's unstable, uncontrolled, magnitude of A is greater than 1. And X and R are the new cases that are entering uh, in the country. So this is where the people are getting affected. And then we also discuss a recovery equation. So first you make people affected. And then you run to make our simulation easier to handle. So I should say dash, a dash, y dash, n minus 1, minus x of n. Okay. And this is the recovery rate. And this negative sign shows that these are the number of people who are dying. And n is the index time index here also it is time index it is time index maybe you may want to run the simulation uh, every day so n is uh, then your day of the month and you may want to run it every week it depends that how you want to keep n and the second one was controlled case where we are maintaining social distancing so the effect is only limited to the household where the people are locked. So we need to do this. Second thing uh, we discussed was uh, discrete time Fourier transform. Uh, we completed learning about the DTFT and in that in that uh, we learn uh, one is the formula of the f the uh, discrete time forward transform and backward transform. Okay, and then we learn about many properties. Properties are important, and usually uh, we use properties to find. Uh, to answer questions in the exam properties and the pairs so I showed you on my in my presentation all the pairs which you can always write <coughs> uh, and uh, use the properties for example so this way I want to start to solve few examples so that you know how to apply these properties so the example is uh, if you are asked to find the inverse uh, Fourier transform of 1 minus half exponential j omega okay so given a question uh, you need to you need to remember that So you need to remember first a formula and a relevant property which you, sh you should use to solve this question. So uh, two basically, so first a formula that has to come to your mind and, and as I mentioned earlier, the most important formula of Fourier transform is a n u of n which is 1 over 1 minus a exponential minus j omega uh, provided a magnitude is less than one so this is the most important formula 
which usually uh, uh, you will be using to solve these questions and the second is the property so the property that comes to my mind is because i see a plus here a minus here so a property that comes to my mind is x of minus n is x exponential minus j omega so these are so the a formula a formula and a property usually these are the two things which you will be requiring uh, to solve uh, any question almost any question in the exam or in the quiz so now you say i know that half n u of n fourier transform is 1 over 1 minus 1 over 2 exponential minus j omega and then applying this property replacing n by minus n you need to replace uh, omega by minus omega so applying this property half minus n u of minus n is equal to 1 minus half exponential j omega so which is the question so so you, this is the solution of the problem and you can easily write this as actually answer is 2 of n u of minus n which obviously is a stable system because it is on the going towards the left so this is example number one that you can solve uh, a Fourier uh, transform question uh, by remembering the property and the Fourier transform pair. So this is page number one. So so let's do another example. And please, if you have any question, feel free to ask. Example. Okay, example number two is, what if I ask you to find Fourier transform of 4j omega, 1 minus 1 over 5 exponential minus j omega. Okay. Now again, uh, you must... Uh, recall uh, a pair and a property so which pair uh, comes to your mind by once you look at this expression obviously it is a of n u of n is 1 over 1 minus a exponential minus j omega okay fine so this is the uh, the pair that comes to your mind and which property comes to your mind uh, looking at this expression you know there is one but here you have exponential for j omega the delay property right the delay property that comes to our mind that we know that multiplication uh, a delay in time is multiplication by exponential minus j d omega <coughs> into x exponential j omega okay so now applying these two properties one is we have 1 over 5 n u of n is 1 over 1 minus 1 over 5 exponential minus j omega this is the first thing but as you know we have only answered this part of the question how about this so it is a delay in time and because it's plus 4 so you say 1 over 5 n plus 4 u n plus 4 is exponential 4 j omega 1 minus 1 over 5 exponential minus j omega okay so uh, 
So this is how you can actually apply uh, the pair and the property to solve almost any questions uh, in the exam or in the quiz. So this now brings us to the next topic and that is about the <coughs> Z-transform. transform so first let's understand the motivation of using Z transform what is the motivation why people use Z transform we know the motivation of Fourier transform Fourier transform is used uh, to find out the frequency contents in a signal and if it is a system then uh, we want to know how uh, the uh, frequency response how the system is going to tailor a uh, different frequency contents in a signal so Fourier transform has like uh, two main objectives one is finding the frequency contents and in terms of if it is a system then finding its frequency response that how is it going to response uh, to a signal having different frequencies what frequencies will be attenuated what will be amplified what will go past as is uh, the motivation behind Z transform is that Z transform primarily is used to find out whether a system is stable or not. Stability to check the stability of the system. Okay. So this is for the analysis because stability is very important. Once we are designing a system uh, and especially stability our concern is in IER because IER system stability is uh, a big concern. We want to make sure that a system we design must be a stable system. So if you remember uh, the stability criteria uh, that we discussed that to check the stability uh, we need to take absolute summation of <coughs> all the samples of the impulse response and we need to make sure the summation is less than infinity. So this is the criteria. There is always already a criteria. So now a question is, if this is the criteria, why do we need to have another criteria? Why should I take Z transform to figure out whether my system is stable or not? And the answer is usually once we are dealing with IIR systems, uh, we don't deal with the impulse response because we know it's going to have an infinite impulse response and an infinite impulse response we cannot perform convolution because convolution will require infinite many multiplications and addition. So to implement an IER system or to design an IER system we deal with difference equation. Okay, so we deal with difference equation. So what uh, difference equation looks like it is y of n plus a1 y of n minus 1 up to a n y of n minus n is equal to b naught x of n plus b1 x of n minus 1 up to b m x of n minus m so this is the difference equation so i all i care once i am designing uh, an ir system i care about the coefficients of the numerator uh, <coughs> coefficients of uh, y and its previous values and coefficient of x and its previous values. So this is all I care. So I don't care about, I don't even go and find the impulse response, but it does not give me any information except uh, going from here to here would take me a lot of efforts. And uh, then I need to first find out the impulse response. Then I need to add all the samples, taking absolute, finding out whether the summation uh, is less than an infinity or not. Uh, is obviously a very tedious task. So this is not a very convenient way. Checking stability of a system using this criteria uh, is not uh, a very 
convenient way of finding the stability so people use z transform so this is the motivation motivation is that we want to check the stability of a system or especially an iir system uh, which has this criteria and uh, but usually as we are dealing with difference equations so i want to find out a way where from the difference equation i can directly comment on the stability of the system okay so with this motivation now i'll help us to appreciate more why z transform is used okay so with this motivation now let's start uh, that um, how the z transform is actually formed we know the fourier transform fourier transform is x of n exponential of minus j omega n summation n goes from minus infinity to infinity is x exponential j omega okay this is uh, the fourier transform and the problem with fourier transform is again about its stability uh, or whether you uh, you can find fourier transform for sequence or not that the criteria is same as that of stability that fourier transform you can only find fourier transform of something if a sequence is obviously absolutely summable same this magnitude because magnitude of this is 1 so this translates into the same criteria as that of the stability of a system which is also a sequence here theek okay? hai so this is the criteria that you can only find uh, the fourier transform of a sequence that is absolutely summable absolutely absolutely mean taking an absolute and then summing absolutely summable so you can only find the fourier transform of a sequence that is absolutely summable for example if i ask you to find the fourier transform of 2 of n u of n okay find its fourier transform is fourier transform does not exist why because it's a a divergence sequence a sequence that diverges to infinity and if i take summation of 2 of n i know that it'll go to infinity okay so we say fourier transform is not possible definitely uh, why because definitely there are few frequencies in the signal uh, that have um, infinite magnitude uh, even the dc value has infinite magnitude so that's the reason uh, that fourier transform does not exist there are frequency contents having infinite value that's why the sequence goes to infinity okay so fourier transform does not exist uh, and you cannot actually find out the fourier transform the fourier transform formula Uh, will not work on the sequence so knowing this that there may be sequences where the fourier transform will not exist what we do is uh, for the z transform we introduce with two a factor r and also please remember that in signal processing all we need to worry about is a uh, an exponential because this is the impulse response of a first order iir system and if you have multiple iir system um, a multi order iir system then you will have those many exponentials in the impulse response so my really focus in signal processing is to deal with this sequence e of n u of n okay uh, not to worrying about other uh, sequences uh, especially for the iir iir filters or iir system so i need to deal with these sequences so i introduce with two as this example or generic gen generic case with a i divide it with r okay so the sequence becomes 2 over r n a over r n in generic case and u of n okay and with this r 
I can control the convergence of the sequence. So this is the handle. That gives me control to converge the sequence. So I have a control to convert the sequence. For example, in this case, 2 over r n u of n, what value of r will make the sequence converge? I know any value of r that is greater than 2. Any value of r that is greater than 2 will make the sequence converge because it will make this whole thing less than 1. So value of r, so there is not one value of r. Another thing we need to remember, usually r will have a range of values. Range of values, that will make the sequence converge. Okay. Uh, similarly, because this is a generic transform, <coughs> instead of 2, if it is 0 0.5 n u of n. I know the Fourier transform exists, but as I have already introduced for the Z transform a handler, so I still need to answer the question that what value of R will make the sequence converge? Again, you will say any value of R uh, which has uh, which is greater than 0 0.5 will make the sequence converge okay so uh, the z transform is primarily that you introduce an r and then take the fourier transform so you introduce this r And then take Fourier transform. This is uh, what the uh, Z transform is. So this R, I can take this out from here and I can bring it at minus R exponential minus J minus N. Okay. So if I make convert this into a generic expression, a generic expression, it will be n goes from 0 to infinity a of n r of minus n exponential minus j omega of n. So this is the expression. Okay. And this can be rewritten as summation n goes 0 to infinity a of n r exponential minus uh, r exponential j omega minus n okay so r exponential j omega because common is minus n minus n so so this is a new variable r exponential j omega we rename it as z it's just a variable which is actually r exponential j omega. So the expression becomes n goes from 0 to infinity a of n z of minus n. Okay. So this is the new expression for and this transformation is called a z transform. And once we have this, we can easily, easily sum it up. Sum it up. How? That we have now this expression, Z transform is equal to summation. N goes from 0 to infinity. A, Z, minus 1 raised to the power n okay this is what we and now we know the formula that n goes from 0 to infinity alpha of n is 1 over 1 minus 
alpha provided alpha magnitude is less than one. So this is the formula which we already know. Okay. So applying this formula, the Z transform is one over one minus A Z inverse. And important is that A Z inverse magnitude has to be less than one. Okay. It means 1 over Z magnitude A over Z magnitude has to be less than 1. It means that Z magnitude, it goes on the other side, has to be greater than A magnitude. So we say Z magnitude is greater than A magnitude. And what is Z? Z, as we remember, are exponential J omega. It is a polar form. Polar, remember? A Cartesian form and a polar form. In which R is the magnitude. <coughs> and omega is the angle. Omega is the angle. So Z magnitude is actually value of R. This is the magnitude in the polar form. So, <clears throat> and remember, this is how we started learning about Z transform. That Z transform is about this handler R. And it's just not one value, it is range of values. So here, uh, we are saying that E of N, U of N has a Z transform, which is 1 minus A Z inverse where the Z magnitude has to be greater than A magnitude. Okay, Z magnitude is greater than A magnitude. So once, whenever we talk about Z transform, there you got to mention two things, the Z transform itself, and this is called the region of convergence. So you, you must give the value of region of convergence. Region. For what values of R the system will converge and usually we draw this value okay it's a complex plane and we draw this value that this is R the magnitude has to be greater than A and this is value of A this is the value of A any value which is greater the magnitude is greater than A in, uh, in our example A was 2. So any value of r that is greater than 2, the expression that is 1 over 1 minus, so 2 of n, u of n, z transform will be 1 over 1 minus 2 z inverse provided z magnitude is greater than 2 and then you must plot it that okay this is valid only if value is greater than 2. This is how you uh, form the Z transform. So Z transform is uh, an important transformation <coughs> that primarily uh, gives you the answer, which I already told you. Basically, we are interested in Z transform because we want to figure out the stability of a system. Okay, so so this is how the Z transform is going to look like. Okay. So this is how the Z transform of A of N, U of N is going to look like. This is so you must plot the region of convergence as well so this is the region of convergence okay so so knowing this now there is also an interesting fact that uh, z transform is not unique
the transform is not unique what does it mean z transform not unique z transform not unique means that uh, you can uh, two different sequences may have same z transform and the rational is there is a sequence which is a of n u of n it has a z transform 1 over 1 minus a z inverse and definitely z magnitude is greater than a magnitude then there is another sequence which is minus a of n u of minus n minus 1 okay let, let, let me plot the two sequences one is a of n u of n so this is a sequence that if it is a converging sequence it goes like this oh, sorry a diverging sequence will go like this and if it's a converging sequence it'll go like this okay so <coughs> this is if a is greater than one this is if a is less than one <coughs> whereas the other sequence which is minus a of n u of minus n minus one so first it starts from n is equal to minus one it starts from n is equal to minus one we know and secondly is on the uh, this negative sign will make it to go on the uh, negative axis and you have, again there are two types one is a diverging sequence it will look like this the diverging sequence and the other one will be a converging sequence that will look like this okay and starting from this not zero from minus one starting from minus one so <coughs> both of these sequences this and this they have same z transform and we can actually uh, compute the z transform of the sequence i will leave it to uh, for you to actually do this yourself but let me just to an extent uh, to an extent let me uh, still okay so if we apply the equation which says z transform is x of n z minus n summation n goes from minus infinity to infinity this is the formula for z transform okay so apply the formula summation obviously run from minus 1 to minus infinity okay so the summation runs from minus 1 to minus infinity to minus 1 let's go minus a of n z of minus n so if we replace n by minus n the summation will now run from 1 to infinity negative sign can be out minus n z of n okay n co we replace with minus n so this is now the new summation then uh, now because the formula we know runs from 0 to infinity remember the formula we know runs from 0 to infinity this is the formula we know goes from 0 to infinity alpha of n is equal to 1 over 1 minus alpha provided alpha magnitude is less than 1 so this is the formula we know so but I want to apply this formula so the summation must run from 0 but it's not running from 0 so I mean if it is not running from 0 so so I say run it from 0 it's not running from 0 so I need to add 
and subtract uh, a zero, zeroth term in this sequence. So what is the zeroth term in this sequence? If you put n is equal to zero, so a raised to the power zero, zero both are one. So I add plus one and minus one uh, to make the summation and then collect these two and make the summation run from zero. So I'm not changing the value of the equation by adding or subtracting something. But now I have successfully basically converted this into a summation that now runs from zero to infinity a of minus n z of n and minus one and this can be written as one the minus minus plus it goes on the other side one minus summation and goes from zero to infinity a of minus one z raised to the power n now i can apply this formula I can apply this formula. So once I apply this formula, I get an answer one minus one over one minus a inverse z. And the, the condition that a minus z magnitude is less than one. So let me re rewrite this here. So it is one over one minus one over one minus a inverse z where a inverse z magnitude is less than one so this is my form so with little mathematical manipulation which i'm leaving it to you that you can do that manipulation you will find out actually this expression is equal to one over one minus a z inverse which is the same as the z transform of a of n u of n and the only difference here is the uh, the range here the region of convergence so let's do this what is this this is z over a magnitude is less than one which means z magnitude is less than a magnitude so here the region of convergence primarily whatever is value of a is inside inside like okay so and that's why it's important to mention the region of convergence now we have two pairs and we'll keep playing with these two pairs one is a of n u of n and its z transform is 1 over 1 minus a z inverse and its region of convergence is z magnitude is greater than a magnitude and once you plot it you plot it like this this is the value of a magnitude the other pair is minus a of n u of minus n minus 1 z transform is same same but the region of convergence is z magnitude is less than a magnitude so this is the region of convergence okay and once you plot it you plot it like this this is inside so this is outside a and this is inside a so any value of r and that is less than in our example if it is a is 2 so any value which is less than 2 will make the sequence converse and it's very easy to actually uh, observe this as well uh, for example if you have a sequence like 2 of n u of n okay and we know that this sequence is a diverging sequence so in order to control this the value of r has to be greater than 2 okay the value of r has to be greater than 2 and that will make this whole thing less than 1 and will make the sequence converge on the other hand if you have a sequence minus 2 of n u of minus n minus 1 you know that this sequence is already a converging sequence okay it's already a because here because going on the left hand side so value of a has to be greater than 1 so if we have a handle if we have a handle like the, the handle we have been discussing the R 
So R got to be less than two, R got to be less than two to make this whole thing less than one. And then once it gets a value of N, which is negative, will make the sequence converge. So uh, these are the two very important uh, sequences uh, in signal processing. One is A of N, U of N. The other one is minus A of N, U of minus N minus one. The second important thing that we need to learn about is finding the poles and zeros. The poles and zeros of this expression. Poles and zeros of this expression. Whatever Z transform we have. What is the pole? Pole is the root of the denominator. What is a zero? Zero is the root of the numerator means given an expression like this, an expression like this, I need to find out roots of the polynomial, roots of the polynomial in the numerator and in the denominator roots of the polynomial in the numerator and roots of the polynomial in the denominator. So I need to find out the roots. How do you find out the roots? And we know from our high school algebra, the Z, it is A over Z, it is Z minus A and Z. So we put numerator equal to zero and denominator equal to zero. So obviously numerator equal to zero, Z is equal to zero, denominator equal to zero, Z is equal to A. So this is called a zero of the system. And this is called pole of the system. Okay, pole of the system. So two important uh, aspects that we need to know. One is pole and the other one is zero of the system. So Ask questions. About the project, about the four year transform, about anything. I hope that all of you are not going to Though there is like one third of the class. If there is no question, somebody writes no question. Yes, yes, project is a graded class project. It's an important project. No question, okay. So the project is a graded project. It's more than a graded project. I want you to actually uh, do all the simulations. Um, you can do it in groups as well. I don't mind you doing the project in groups because I want you to actually take real data, get the data of different countries and how the time series data. So you got to the, the many websites where you will find the time series data. So get the time series data uh, before they actually impose this lockdown. And you will find out that uh, the numbers would be exponentially increasing and as soon as they do the lockdown and uh, basically as what they say they're flattening the curve so uh, they're flattening the curve uh, means that uh, they are not making it go exponentially uh, so deadline of the graded assignment we can uh, perhaps uh, give you uh, is, it has already been a week so maybe another week uh, just one week and uh, do this. This is an important assignment. I want uh, your results to be, you know, uh, all over the social media. No, you need to find out the value of A for different countries. Okay. And Dr. Ali mentioned um, a trick to figuring out that if you plot uh, the exponential on a logarithmic scale, it becomes a straight line. And the slope of the straight line will give you a value of A. 
so what he mentioned was that if you have data take data of different countries once it's just going uh, exponentially uh, before they start putting a control uh, and then find out the value of a and then once they apply control means uh, then the you need to have many of the difference equations uh, for every household there's a difference equation so you have multiple difference equations and then you need to add them together uh, how many countries should we take it's uh, really up to you that how many countries you want to take uh, dr ali is saying how about this uh, this not this friday maybe next friday uh, coming for yeah coming friday no coming friday is tomorrow uh, t today is the friday so next friday yes next friday a as a percentage with which covid 19 is increasing that is 15 percent to become 0 0.1 not really not really it is not really like that it's not with it is because it's uh, something which is uh, on on the daily basis you need to plot uh, this on a daily basis okay and once you plot it on a daily basis you must have seen uh, the anything you plot like people who are being infect in, inflicted <coughs> look at the usa plot and you will find out it is plot like this okay it is a plot like this so uh, this is uh, a of n u of n <coughs> so every country has a similar plot uh, but with different values of a yeah today is friday <laughs> so so don't be confused uh, it is not the percentage again uh, it is uh, uh, one person affecting how many people every day okay so a for example if you say that one person affect one person another person every day so value of a is 2 so if you look at this equation y of n a y of n minus 1 plus x of n so let's say there is this one guy at zero time who got infected okay one person only uh, and but then he if affects two people so y0 is equal to 2y minus 1 plus x0 which is 1 and we know that there is no previous cases of coronavirus so on zeroth day this is the only person who is infected with coronavirus yes there is a detailed draft uh, which we have uh, shared on the your group your group on, on the on the google and as well as uh, on on the facebook page okay so now the next day okay this is 2y0 and let's say no other person is coming into the system it's just that guy who has now affected two people so y of one is two the next day now these two people are going to affect two more people okay google classroom and shared on the facebook yes so y2 is going to 2 into 2 is it going to 4 okay so this one guy affecting 2 and these two are affecting it's making them 4 so so affecting another person and every person affecting another person so this is how it is going to grow the affected people are going to grow like this okay so usually perhaps you know I, I think it will not be two it will be something like 1.09 or something like that so you need to figure this out this a you need to figure this out higher the value of a uh, worse it is so smaller the value of a better it is so that's what we are saying that once uh, the a is uh, uh, greater than one so you have more and more and more cases and at some point you say enough of it and now you need to and you start applying for our simulation we are saying okay effect 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 the coronavirus is affecting people and then start curing 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 people uh, but it never goes to zero because there are going to be a number of people who would die of coronavirus these are the deaths okay so so uh, uh, the model becomes very intricate once you run both the equation like the 
people getting affected and people getting cured and then there are entry cases between the two so what I to make the problem simple I said first you just affect 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 people uh, so you find out how many people are getting affected uh, modeling it as a uh, first order IER system and then running the recovery process where you run the same equation but with a negative sign and negative sign is for the people who are dying every day okay so uh, this really brings us to end of uh, end of today okay uh, uh, inshallah we meet again uh, uh, next week and uh, i hope that more people will attend and then uh, we discuss uh, interesting other interesting projects and also keep learning about the z transform and also you need to like uh, appreciate you know uh, this is the value of knowledge that uh, you can apply your knowledge whatever little you know on to real problems uh, and then figure out that how those problems uh, can be solved or at least can be analyzed for people to understand their gravity uh, so thank you very much if no further questions aap sabko juma mubarak ho apne ghar mein juma pade मस्जिद में नहीं जाना है आपने और अपना बहुत ज़्यादा ख्याल रखें थैंक यू वेरी मच